Hello math students, this is Mrs. Yowd. Today we're going to do chapter four, lesson two, which is slope of a line. Please open up your spiral notebooks and open up to a nice clean page and put this title at the top of your page. The slope is very important. It tells you the steepness of the line and also the direction of the line. A slope of two is going to be steeper than a slope of one half because two is greater than one half. So that is what I mean by the steepness of the line. We also know the direction of the line. Remember slope dude from our video last week, puff puff positive, if it goes up from the left to the right, it's positive slope. Negative is when it goes downhill and that's nice negative. This is zero slope because slope dude is having zero fun. And if we have a straight up and down the line, it is undefined. So that's what I mean when I talk about direction. It's either going positive or negative or zero or undefined. So there are two ways to find slope. You can count it on a graph or you could use the slope formula. Let's first look at when you count it on a graph. Please pause the video and make yourself a graph on your paper right now. So when you're on the graph, what you need to do is take your two points and make yourself a right triangle from those two points. You wanna make sure that you go straight up and straight over to the next point. Now what we're going to do is we're going to count the squares in between. So this is one, two, three, four up, and one, two, three, four, five, six over. Now the slope is defined as rise over run. So that means that the number on the rise, in this case four, goes on the top of, of the slope, and the run number, in this case six, goes on the bottom of the slope. So for this line, our slope is, the rise is four, and the run is six. Now anytime you can simplify, you do need to simplify. So in this case, we're gonna divide by two. So we have a slope of two over three. So that is the slope of this line. And let's check that just to make sure it's correct. If I went from this point, I went up two and over three, and then up two and over three, it does indeed work. The slope is basically the stair step. So how steep will the stairs be for the line that we're looking at? Now let's talk about using the slope formula. Remember the slope formula is the rise over the run. Now the rise is your change in the y values because the y axis is vertical. So it's the change in the y values over the chain, the run, which is the change in the x values because that's what's horizontal. Finding the change in something, what you're doing is subtracting. So what we're going to do is we are going to subtract the y values. So it'll be y1 minus y2 over subtracting the x values, x1 minus x2. Or if you prefer, you could do it the other way. So it would be y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. It does not really matter which one comes first as long as you're consistent. So if you put one of the points first, then you have to be consistent and put the same point first on the denominator. So let me show you what I mean. If we take the same two points that we started with, negative three comma two and positive three comma six, we're going to use this slope formula over here to find the slope. And I'm gonna show you how to do this in two different ways. So we're going to first write what I like to call is the skeleton of the formula. The skeleton of the formula is a fraction. So we're gonna have our fraction line here and the skeleton of the formula also includes negative signs. So I'm gonna put negative here and negative here. So we're gonna do this in two different ways, so I'm gonna write it twice. 
Now, on the numerator on the top, we have our y numbers. So our y numbers will go on top. So our y numbers in this case are 2 and 6. So on the left, I'm going to do 2 minus 6. And on the right, I'm going to switch it around and do 6 minus 2. So now on the denominator, we have our x numbers. So our x numbers are negative 3 and positive 3. So I'm going to have on the left, we're going to do negative 3 and positive 3. And then I'm going to flip it around and do 3 and negative 3. Anytime you have a negative after an, something like this, you need to put them in parentheses. OK, so now we're just going to simplify both of these. On the left, I have 2 minus 6, which is negative 4. And negative 3 minus 3 is negative 6. So that simplifies to positive 4 over 6. And then when I simplify it by dividing by 2 on the top and the bottom, I get 2 thirds. So now let's take a look at the right hand side. 6 minus 2 is positive 4. And then this is 3 plus 3 because it's a double negative. So that's 4 over 6. And if I simplify this, then I get 2 thirds. So you'll notice that I got the same answer here, 2 thirds, as here, 2 thirds. And it's the same answer that we got when we counted on the graph as well. So that is how you use the formula. Let's do some more practice problems. Please turn to page 76 in your RPJ. Let's take a look at number one. Number one is on a graph for us. So that means that we just need to draw our triangle between those two points, make sure that it's a right triangle going straight up and straight over. Now we're going to count the boxes. So we have one, two up and one, two, three over. This is a positive slope. So I'm going to write the word positive here because I need to make sure to write that that is an answer. So the slope in this case is positive 2 over 3. And that is the answer for number 1. Let's take a look at number 2. This time we have a negative slope. So I'm going to write negative here because I need to make sure to put that as part of my answer. I'm going to go from one point to the other again and go straight up. And this time I'm going to the left over. So when we count one, two, three, up four, and over one, two, three, four, five, six. So in this case, we are going negative four over six. Now let's simplify that. And we're going to divide by 2 on the top and the bottom. And we're going to get negative 2 thirds. So the slope on number 2 is negative 2 thirds. I'm going to do a couple of other examples that are not in your RPJ. We're going to do, I'm going to call this number 1B and number 2B because I need for you to make sure that you practice a few times uh, putting using the slope formula as well. So for 1b, we're going to do the point negative 3, comma 1 and negative 5, comma negative 4. So we're going to use our slope formula this time. We're not going to use the graph. So remember, to use the slope formula, you need to draw out the skeleton of the graph first. We're going to put our y numbers on top. Remember, it does not matter the order that they go in. I always do it the order that they're written, just because it's easier for me to do it that way. And on the denominator, I'm going to do my y, num my x numbers, excuse me, my x's go on the bottom. So negative 3, since I started with the 1 on the top, I have to start with the negative 3 on the denominator. So negative 3 and then negative 5 will go in parentheses since it's negative. OK, so let's simplify this. We have a double negative, so that's 1 plus 4 on the top. And on the bottom, we also have a double negative, so it's negative 3 plus 5. So to simplify that, we have a 1 plus 4 is 5, and negative 3 plus 5 is 2. Now, our answer just stays as 5 over 2. Some people think that they want to change that to uh, 2 and a half, but when we're dealing with slope, you want to leave it as an improper fraction because up 5 and over 2 makes more sense when you're graphing. 
Let's take a look at uh, another problem. I'm going to call it 2b. So I have the points negative 2, 3, and 3, 2. So remember the first thing we do when we're using our formula is write the skeleton of the formula first. Next we're going to put our y numbers on the top. So 3 and 2 go on the numerator. And then our x numbers go on the denominator. So we have negative 2 and positive 3 go on the bottom. Okay, so let's simplify this. 3 minus 2 is 1, and negative 2 and negative 3 add together to give us negative 5. So negative, sorry, 1 over negative 5 is my slope on that problem. Okay, let's look at number 3. Number 3, I notice that I have a completely horizontal line. Now, the horizontal lines are always zero slope. So for this problem, the slope equals zero. I don't even need to count it. I know that that's what it's going to be. Uh, let's take a look at number four. This time we have a vertical slope. And I know that vertical slopes have an undefined slope. So on this one, the slope equals undefined. You'll notice that I could not draw a triangle on either of these because it was completely horizontal. I can't go up and over. It was completely vertical. I can't go up and over, right? So anytime you cannot draw your triangle, it's either going to be a slope of zero if it's horizontal or a slope of undefined if it's vertical. Just like before, we're going to practice a couple more using the slope formula. So go ahead and write down the points for 3b and 4b. Okay, so on 3b, we're going to write our skeleton of the formula down first. Remember, we have a fraction line and two subtraction signs on the top and the bottom. So on our top, we're going to have our y values. So negative 2 and negative 2 go on the top. So I'm going to write negative 2 and negative 2. On the bottom, we have 1 and 7. Okay, so let's simplify this. We have a double negative there, so I'm just going to rewrite it. So it's negative 2. Double negative means it's plus 2. And then on the bottom, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. So this becomes 0 over negative 6. Anytime 0 is on the top, the answer is going to be 0. So my, this is a slope of 0. Okay, let's take a look at 4b. So we're going to have our skeleton of the formula, just like before, a fraction with two subtraction signs on the top and the bottom. The y numbers go on top, so we have 5 and 2. The x numbers go on the bottom, so we have negative 3 and negative 3. So 5 minus 2 is 3, and there's a double negative here, so it's going to be negative 3 plus 3. So we're going to have 3 over 0. Anytime you have 0 on the bottom, the answer is going to be undefined. Okay, let's take a look at number 5. Which set of stairs is more difficult to climb and explain? So here we have staircase 1, which has a slope of up 6 over 10, up 6 over 10, up 6 over 10. And here we have staircase 2, which is a slope of up 8 over 12, up 8 over 12. So what we need to do is we need to find the slope of each one and compare them. So let's take a look at staircase 1. So our slope on staircase 1 is a rise over run. So our rise number is 6, and our run number is 10. If I simplify that, I'm going to divide by 2 on the top and bottom, so I get 3 fifths. Let's take a look at staircase number 2. Staircase number 2 has a rise of 8 and a run of 12. So I'm going to simplify that by dividing by 4, and I get 2 over 3. So we have to decide which fraction is bigger. So in this case, 3 fifths is less than 2 thirds. That means that 2 thirds is bigger. So uh, 2 thirds belongs to staircase number 2. So in this case, staircase number 2 is steeper and therefore more difficult to climb. 
Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching.